Hi, my name is Inger Stark, and I want to welcome you to the third annual Peralta Online Equity Conference. Um, a couple of logistics before we launch the session. Um, one, I wanted to say that um, we have our caption um, option turned on. If you want to turn captions on for this presentation for yourself, you have only to toggle the um, show caption button. Um, we are being recorded. And I encourage you to participate in the chat. Um, presenters can't always keep an eye on that, but I do. I'm excited to join the session and stay for the presentation. So feel free to ask questions in there. And at the end, I could always feed those to the presenters if they don't catch them. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Nancy and Aniko and let them introduce themselves and their session. You're muted, Nancy. I'm always doing that. I'm telling you that mute button gets me every time. My name's Nancy Olson, and I'm the Director of Instructional Technology and Online Learning at Barstow Community College. I've been an in, in distance education and an instructional design specialist for 26 years, <laughs> so a long time. And um, I'm going to let Aniko introduce herself real quickly now. Hi everyone, my name is Anna Kokedulich and I've been an instructional design specialist here at Barstow Community College for the last 20 years. I'm just now celebrating my 20 year anniversary and I've been in distant education for about 23 years. And we work together for all of it. So, you know, after that time, you're either great friends or you're mortal enemies and I'm pleased to say we are great friends. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm gonna go through the components of Latch and explain to you what it is. And then Annika will do a hands-on demonstration in Canvas of how to fix all eight components of AD to make a page ADA compliant. So let me go ahead and get started here now. All right, and hopefully are you seeing the right one, Annika? All right, here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of skip over this one. Um, we already kind of introduced ourselves, but half a century when we were doing this, we said we have half a century together. All right, so ASTED is our ADA compliance course. It was written by our team here at Barstow Community College. It stands for ADA Compliance and Equitable Delivery with Instructional Technology. So if you use the components of the ASTIC course, you will ace your class. Um, it's offered once each semester, once in spring, fall, and summer. It teaches ADA compliance for Canvas, Word, and PDF. It introduces Latch and the BCC slogan for ADA compliance, which is don't latch the door on your students. Um, we have guest speakers in this course, so it is put on by our public information office. They talk about web page and ADA compliance. Then our access department talks about student accommodations. And that and this course is promoted by the ITC, which is my department, the Instructional Technology Center, the public information officer office, access, and our student success and equity committee. Now Let's, let's talk a little bit about ADA compliance by thinking about a latch door. If you don't see the latch on the door, you're not going to get on the other side. And it would be a, a horrible thing to be in front of a door for education and you hear everybody learning on the other side, but you can't get in. And the reason why you can't get in is because the faculty member has accidentally latched the door on some of their students. Now, some of their students, they find the door handle, they walk in and they're fine, but others are latched behind this door and they can't get out. So now if you think about that, by the end of this presentation, you'll always remember to not latch the door on your students and you'll be able to do all of the eight levels of ADA compliance. So what is latch? Um, LATCH stands for as an acronym, and it's the top eight components of ADA compliance for electronic documents. Linearization, links, lists, alt tags, tables, closed captioning, colors, and headers. And as you can see, this lines up and makes LATCH. Now, linearization is just a really fancy word for reading order. 
Um, if you really want to check out uh, your, your college's ADA compliance, the next time that a flyer comes around, especially a PDF flyer, try copying and pasting the content of that flyer into a Word document, and you're going to find out why linearization matters. And it matters because when you create a flyer and you don't pay attention to it, you could have part of one sentence here, then another part of another sentence, and another part of another sentence. And if you can't see, you can't read the flyer. Okay, so linearization just simply makes means making sure that your reading order is left to right and top to bottom because that's how we read in English. Now the next one is links, and I'm just gonna go over really quickly some link rules. So links should be concise. So they should be one to five words. That's a good length for a link. They should never be hidden. So don't, don't put in a link with no text because you know you could accidentally click on it. You think you're going, you, you don't know you're going somewhere, you're somewhere else, and then you think you have a virus. Don't do that. Um, avoid using the actual address as a link. So a lot of times you'll see a website and it has this link that's this long and it starts with HTTP. Don't do that. Nope, it should never be the actual address as a link. It's only if it's very short and it makes sense that you can do that. So like for www.barstow.edu, you can do that because I can remember that much. But if it's you know 12 directories in and 100 characters long, I'm never going to be able to remember it, so don't use it as your link. Um, if the page will be printed, then it's okay to find a way to have a short link that's printed on the page and is the actual link because otherwise they can't get there, right? Linked images must always use the alt text to describe the link. So if you have a button that says next page, you want to actually have alt text that says next page so that the students know that by clicking on that, they're going to the next page. Links should be underlined and look distinctive. And the best rule is all of the programs have figured out how to make links distinctive in, in a similar way. So it's typically gonna be blue words that are underlined, that's a link. Don't change it, don't change the link colors, definitely don't remove the underlining and don't make things that aren't links underlined. Now for lists, there are some real key do's and don'ts for lists. The do's for lists are that you should use them for key terms and concepts. So if you're gonna list a whole bunch of different varieties of fruit, use a list, right? Um, for organizing like information, uh, for numbered steps. So if I'm going to teach you how to make a cake and it's a 10 step process, then I wanna teach you it using a numbered list. So you know all 10 steps in order. Um, you use headers to break up long lists. So it, a lot of times like in our, our curriculum outline or course outlines of record, we have um, complex lists. So they have like headers and then and additional subheaders, right? If you use headers to break up those long lists, you say, you know what, there's five major headings and you make those actually headers and not lists, it actually will help the, the students to navigate better. If you, what you don't want to use lists for is you don't just want a list to draw attention to things. You don't want it to group unlike information. You don't want to create unnecessary sublevels. So you don't want to just say, well, I have level one, two, three, four, unless you have a reason for it. It should be in descending order of importance. Don't use customized bullets. They look really cute, but the problem is, is that screen readers don't know their bullets because they're customized. So don't use customized bullets, stick with the ones that the program gives you. Don't add extra hard returns to a, a, a list. I know that it, it might seem like, well, it's expanding it and making it easier to read, but it's not. It's breaking the list. Then it's not a valid list anymore. And never manually create a list. Always use the tools that the program gives you. Now for alt tags, every image must have alt text. So decorative images must use an empty alt tag, which is just two quotation marks, one right after the other. And that just indicates to the screen reader that this is a decorative image and they won't miss anything if they don't know what it is. 
Images must be, may be described within the text surrounding the image. Sometimes you get a really complex image and you're like, I, I can't describe this in 120 characters. When that happens, it's absolutely okay to say, the image is described directly below the text as your alt text. And then underneath it, describe the image. This is an image of and what it is. Um, alt text should never be redundant. So you don't want to have um, repetition in your alt text. Um, don't use image of or graphic of in the alt text. And I know I just said this is an image of, but that's because I'm describing it underneath the image. If it's inside the image, if it's the alt text itself, you don't want to use image of or graphic of because the, the screen readers actually say that image of and then reads what the alt text is. So if you put it in, then it's saying image of, image of, and you don't want that. When creating alt text, it's important to consider the content and the function. First, you need to decide, is this even something that is just, is it just decorative or is it relative, re relevant to the content of the lecture? If it's relevant to the content of the lecture, how? What are you trying to get across? What is this image adding that someone who's visible, who, who has vision can see it, that someone who doesn't have vision can't. And then that is your alt tag. Tables, so the tables, they're kind of complex. And so if we have time at, at the end of it, we'll do a little demo on tables. And if we don't, that's okay. It's our filler if we need to, because tables can be complex. The first thing to remember is that tables use a table caption. So you have to have table captions. You need to have header rows and columns or and or columns. You can have both, but you need to have either a header row, a header column, or both. Um, and you always want to use percentages and not pixels for width. And the reason why is because screens, monitors, all kinds of screens, they, they use something called resolution. And resolution varies from device to device to device. If you say a specific width for your table cells, then it's going to replicate that width. And if you say, I want to, I have a really good monitor. And so my resolution is 2000 pixel width wide and I make it that, it's gonna look great on mine. But now my students could be looking at it and they're on their, their phone and their phone is 800 by 600 because you know that's what they can afford and suddenly now they're scrolling back and forth on that table to read the content of the table back and forth with the horizontal bar that's terrible if you use percentages the percentages will allow you to um, adjust it allows this the screen to adjust to the size of the resolution of the personal device being used. So even though it's 2000 for mine and it's 800 for theirs, if I say it's four rows across and they're each 25%, it's gonna make it 25% of 800 for them and 25% of 2000 for me. And that's why you wanna do percentages and never pixels for width. Now you don't ever want to nest data tables. So you don't want to take a table and say, you know what, it'd be really cool to put this table in here in this one cell because then your screen reader gets confused. It reads according to cells and columns. And when you throw in another table, now it's doubled the complexity and it's going to make it really hard for someone who can't see to understand what's going on. You don't want to leave the upper left hand corner cell blank at first that can be very hard you know because a lot of times we just don't think that we think well we have a column here and it's and it's a header column and we have a column up here and it's a header column so we gotta leave that one in the middle in the corner blank no you don't you just gotta stop and think what really is the column the header column indicating and then that's what that one left hand corner is going to be um, and you don't want to use more than five columns because remember how I told you about different size resolutions, even though if you have a great monitor and it looks good with 10 columns on your monitor, that student who has a phone is going to have a really hard time with 10 columns because it'll adjust if you use percentages. But if it's, if it's 10 columns and it's 800 pixel widths wide, that's only 80 pixels that it's 
it's showing at a time in each column. Okay, for captioning, what you want to do is you do want to use proper punctuation. You don't want to just do auto captioning and say, it's fine, it's caught up most of it, and it'll be okay. No, you want to go in and correct the auto captioning and use proper punctuation, upper and lowercase letters, and you want to preserve and identify the slang and the accents. So if I'm talking, my husband, his parents came from England, and if he wants to, he can talk like an Englishman. And if he were doing that, then I should put on there that there's a British accent, right? So that people know that. Because if I'm only typing in the words he's saying, they don't know that he's speaking with a British accent. But if I tell them, then they do. Um, don't obscure the on-screen text or other essential video elements with your captioning. Make sure that you move it so that you're, you're not going to cover that up. I like to just leave a little bit on the bottom of my video that's kind of blank, and that way I don't have to worry about that because that's where captioning typically occurs. Um, don't forget to check automated captions for accuracy. Don't be me. Oh my God, I once I was talking about embedding a video and the screen had Nancy in bed with the video. And, you know, I was like, it's not what I said, but it serves me right because I didn't check, right? Um, and don't forget to add non-speech sounds in square brackets. So if it's just music, you just put a bracket that says music until the music's over. For colors, here's, here's a few tips for colors. You're going to keep a white background with dark text. That's absolutely the best way. And you know that's true because when you read a lot, you don't wanna read on anything except for a white background and dark text. Um, if you do need to use color, make sure you use at least 14 point font with bold with color or 18 point font with color. Um, that's, that's to make it a sufficient contrast so that your students can actually see if they have some color issues, like they're colorblind. Don't use color as the sole indication of an important element, so you never want to say um, the correct answers are in red. Because if I'm red, green, colorblind now, I, I, I don't know, maybe uh, everybody else knows the right answers, but I don't. Um, don't use a dark highlight with dark text or a light text with a light background because it makes it impossible to read it. Um, Annika, my colleague, was showing me the bath and body bottles, and they are ripe for a um, lawsuit. They really are because they are not using correct color contrast on their bottles, and that is an ADA issue. And all it takes is for one person to say, let me contact that class action lawyer. If you guys decide to do that, um, you know, let us know what we'll sign up for it too. All right, so headings. Headings are used to set the hierarchy for a page. So they set the order of importance, right? They delineate the topics and they, ex and they let the, the students know like, the very top topic is your title. Underneath it, you're going to have three subheadings, and they're going to cover, you know, apples, oranges, and bananas. And underneath the apples, oranges, and bananas is going to be um, length of growing season, where they'll grow, and how they grow. And so now you have three levels of importance in there. And by using accurate headings created by the computer, People who can't see have the same advantage as people who can because they can use the screen reader to jump down. If they only want to know about apples, they can jump down to apples. And they only want to know where they grow, they can jump down to where they grow without having to listen to the screen reader read the whole page to them. Okay. Um, screen readers um, can, um, the heading order, it, it can't be skipped. So you don't want to go heading heading one to heading three, you wanna go heading one to heading two. And it's important to remember in Canvas, heading one is always your title. So you only have two, three, and four. So you always start with two. And then if you need another level, you go to three. If you need another level, you go to four. All right, so, oops, look, I'm gonna go back. Cause now I always like to see, um, I know that I have taken a lot of ADA compliance training over the years. And I could never remember the components because it was like, 
alt text, tables, closed caption, heading. I'm like, oh my God, there's so many of them. And they make no sense to me. With the latch system, they do. So now I have eight items. So I'm going to use my fingers because I like to count that way. Linearization, links, lists, alt text, tables, closed captions, color contrast, and headers, latch. That's all you need to know. You'll never latch the door on your students again, I promise. Just remember the acronym LATCH and you have ADA compliance link licked. Once you do the hands-on demo with Aniko, Aniko is now, I'm going to turn this over to her and she is going to show to you and we'll see. Oh, I was right, there they are. And she will show you how to fix all eight of these on a Canvas page using the built-in ADA checker. Aniko, take it away. I will stop my share. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Aniko, and I'm going to demonstrate how to create an ADA compliant page in Canvas. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. Can everyone see my demo course? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to go to one of my lecture pages. Uh, we're, going, whoop. we're going to go to my demo and I'm going to hit edit. So here I'm going to add different items of latch as content and show you how to use the Canvas ADA checker and do your own ADA check. So here I'm going to add a list, a link, an image, a data table a caption video, colored text, and headings. So to get started, I'm going to copy some content. Sorry about that. My computers. Okay, so now we have some content. So for we're gonna start off with headings. We're gonna go a little bit backwards on the acronym latch because when you're creating your content, it, you, you usually do go in different categories of latch. So first, we're going to start off with headings. So like Nancy said, heading one is always used by Canvas for the page title. So here, we're going to make this a heading two. And then we're going to do heading three. And then the first items we're going to go through is lists. So here, we made our lists. Whoops. Sorry about that. My computer did it wrong. Uh, all right, so <laughs> now we're at heading four. So I did my heading one is my page title. Heading two is my top of my content, my main topic, and then my subtopics, compliance issues. And then my first thing I'm going to do is lists. So lists, you always want to use a true bulleted list. So when you have your content, all you have to do is highlight to the end of your content go to your rich content editor in Canvas and hit your bulleted list. That's a true bulleted list. You always wanna make sure your content is true bulleted lists. You do not wanna have a typed out list because that's not ADA compliant. But for this demo, I'm gonna actually add a non ADA compliant list. And I'm going to actually show you how this ADA checker works in the end. So let me go ahead and type out my numbered list you can see as i'm typing it out that bottom canvas ada checker is telling me whoop you did something wrong so this little checker here is the canvas ada checker and they added a new feature that now it actually tells you when something's wrong right away with this little bubble so i'm actually going to leave this as a non-ada compliant list and in the end of the demo i'm going to show you how easily it is to correct that error using this Canvas ADA checker. So we're gonna move on to the next item in Latch, and that's links. Let me grab some content. And we're gonna go, okay, so here, we wanna make sure we put in our headings. So we're at heading four on that one. And now you can see I typed in, or I pasted in my links, but they're not true links yet. So I'm gonna make sure they're links. And now we're at a link, here, here's a small link. It tells you what it is, so you can leave it at is, or you can add the text. I'm gonna leave this, with, this one as text until I get to the end of the demo, 
And I want to show you how this does not pick up links when you need to put them as text. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do the second link here. So you want to always make sure you put text as your links. So you can really easily do that by just clicking the link, going to link options, going to text, and then put in the text and hit done. So now you can see the text is for your link and you're good to go for that particular link. Now I'm gonna show you the, this later and then I'm gonna fix this one later. So next we're at alt text for images. So I'm gonna get my heading here, put in my heading, but you notice I put in this heading and it didn't give me an error because canvas, the canvas checker doesn't pick up if you don't put your headings in. They'll pick up the hierarchy. If you went from one, uh, two to four, it will flag that, but it won't flag it if you forget to put it in all together. So you wanna make sure you keep an eye on that. And that's why I say you need to do your own ADA spot check on your own and don't always depend on the Canvas ADA checker to pick it up. So here on the alt text for images, I'm gonna put two different files in. One will be a file upload image, and one will be an image I already put in, in my files area. And I just wanted to show two different aspects to give you a little bit of, of instruction on how to do that. So we have our placeholder here. We're gonna to go to the rich content editor here and click on images. First, we're gonna do a file upload image. And then I'm gonna get my file and pull it over. Here's me. Yes, it actually snowed in Barstow. We couldn't believe it. And now here, when you do a file upload image, Canvas gives you this great area here that you can automatically type in your alt text. So why not, right, while you're doing it? Or if it's a decorative image, you can mark that. So when you submit it, now it just takes a little bit for the, it to upload. And you notice it didn't give me an error because I already did my alt text. But on here, the problem is with this image, it's rather big. So we always wanna resize it to make sure everyone can see it on across all platforms. And then the next image I'm gonna put in is a course image that I already uploaded into my course. So we're gonna go back to the rich content editor here, click on course images. And keeping with the theme of snow day and Barstow, here's another picture. Now here, again, we wanna resize it. Now we have it resized, but when I put this image in here, you notice that the Canvas ADA checker automatically gave me an error, and that's because it doesn't have the alt text. So to easily fix that, click on image options and put it in. You can see that Canvas already put in the file name of that image, but that is not good. You need to put in the actual alt text, but for this one, I'm gonna not put that in because I wanna show you what this catches in the end. So gonna, we're gonna leave that one without alt text and we're gonna move back to the next thing and that's tables. So I'm gonna put in a table. So I'm gonna insert a table. You can go to your rich content editor here. Oop, let's see, it's blocking. All right, hit tables. I'm gonna go a three by three, and now I'm gonna add some content. So bear with me while I add the content. When I do my content on my demos, I always like to keep with the theme of the meeting, which is ADA issues, right? So bear with me as I add some content to my table. We like to show people how to add tables in Canvas. So this is part of the demo. And then again, for lists, use real links, lists, I mean. And then let's add a little bit more content. We're gonna just do one more. Alt text. So this is where we're at so far in the demo, right? Alt text. Always use alt text on the images. And the last one. So now that I created my table here. This table is not ADA compliant in Canvas. 
In Canvas, you'll need to add a caption and header rows. So you can do that by going up to Rich Content Editor, Table Properties, but I'm actually not gonna do that in this demo because I wanted to show you how quickly you can make a table ADA compliant in with the accessibility checker. You can see when I was putting in this table, it automatically gave me an issue. And I'm gonna fix that in the end of the demo when I run the accessibility checker. So I'm going to actually put a pause on that table and go to the next item. So the next item is colored text. So let me get some content here so I could show you the different aspects with colored text. So here we want to add our heading, heading four for our subtopics. And now here we're going to deal with colored text. So I'm going to actually make this ADA compliance here. We're going to go up and make it red. Now, when a minute I made it red, you can see there was another issue down here. Now, I'm going to keep that red and I'm going to show you how to fix it with this Canvas ADA checker. So, the next one, I'm going to make it a dark red, a more deeper red, better color ratio. And you can see down here actually didn't have an issue. So, the next thing I wanted to show you is highlighting. So, with highlighting, you need to make sure, as Nancy mentioned, you have to make sure there's a good color ratio. So right now the text is black, but if you highlight with dark color, let's go real drastic with gray. And you can see it when you highlight it with your mouse, but the minute I click off of that mouse, you can't see anything. Now it did flag that issue, but let's go ahead and fix that highlighting manually with a lighter color. So let's go yellow. All right. so. That is how you do color text. So the next I'm gonna show you how to embed your studio video. So get our heading. Let's go ahead and make our heading. And let's go back here. So now I'm gonna show you how to embed a studio video. Now, when you're using videos, you always wanna make sure they're all closed captioned and they're captioned correctly whenever using any kind of video, whether you created it or someone else created it. So let's go ahead and embed that studio video. So here we're going to go to the rich content editor again, click on studio. Then I'm going to click my first tutorial here. You can see that it's closed captioned right here and hit select. I'm going to turn off commenting and then hit embed. That is how you embed a studio video. And now you can double check that you have captioning by clicking this little settings option right here and you have captions currently they are off, but you just have to click them and select the language as English and you are set to go. So always make sure all videos are closed captioned, it is a requirement for ADA compliancy. So the next option we have is headings. So on this one I just wanted to show you the heading hierarchy of the, how it looks and how um, it'll show on your content page. So let's go ahead and keep with the theme, put our, our headings in for this page. And then again here, just wanted to pinpoint heading one will always be used in Canvas as the page title. So you'll start your content here with heading two. And I just wanted to show you how it'll look. So heading two, heading three, and heading four. There is a difference and it, it's really good to use your headings. It is a requirement to have be ADA compliant and it's good for anyone. So it really is a good thing to use. So always make sure you have your headings into your content. So now we're at the end of our content page. Now I'm gonna run that little ADA checker and you'll see how it is always good to use this function if you're using Canvas. It's a great tool to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that process. And you can see it found five issues. And the first one was that bad list. And I call it a bad list because it's a numbered list and it's not ADA compliant. So here, we're gonna click this little button here and hit apply. Now I'm gonna screw up a little bit so you can see that it actually fixed it and you're good to go on that list. It was that easy. Now, the next thing 
is that image with that alt text. It, I didn't have my alt text in it and the accessibility checker caught that. So now we're gonna go and it's this one that doesn't have it. We're gonna go ahead and put, and there we go. That easy, type in that alt text, or if it was a decorative image, you can mark that and hit apply. So it already went on to the next issue, and that is that table I was talking to you about. So in Canvas, you must have a caption for your table. So ADA items and hit apply. Now you have to select a header row and hit apply. Now that table is good to go and it's ADA compliant. Now it went to that next issue is that colored text, which I intentionally made non-ADA compliant because I wanted to show you that how easily it is to fix it. Now it, it gives you options to use. If I go with the darker red, I can hit apply. But if I go with the lighter red, I can't apply it. So it's telling you that lighter red is not ADA compliant. So let's go with that dark red and hit apply. So now you have the balloons. Canvas Accessibility Checker saying your page is ADA compliant, but that may not always be the case. That's how come you have to spot check and know the acronym latch and go through your document. So let's go through it. So we have our headings, perfect. Our true lists, perfect. We fix this list as well. Now with the link, you could leave this because it's a small link, or you can go to link options, put that in. So let's go ahead and put that in just for good measure. And we have our text for our link and there you go. And that's what I wanted to show you is that Canvas accessibility checker did not catch that that it didn't have the text, even though it's a small link, it should it it doesn't catch that, so it won't catch long links either. So you always want to spot check your work and make sure you have everything. Then we have our headers here. We fixed our alt text on the pictures. We fixed that dreaded table. It's now ADA compliant. We fixed our our color issues. Double check our captioning on our video. It is there. Always make sure your videos are closed captioned. And then here's our headings. So the last thing we have to do is save and publish our page. Always make sure you save and publish your work for your students to be able to see it. And that is how you create an ADA compliant page and how you use the Canvas ADA checker. So I'm at the end of my demo and I'm gonna hand it back to Nancy. You're muted. There you go. Oh, we can't hear you, Nancy. Hold on. All right. There we go. No. Okay. Yep. All right, guys, so I have one more thing. I'm going to share my screen one more time. I want to show you one more thing we have that we think will be very helpful to you. And that is the fact that this course, this is one lesson out of a five lesson course. Do you all see where it says ACED OER course? Okay, this is an OER course developed by Barstow Community College. It is offered under the CC Attribution Non-Commercial Share Alike License. It is considered, um, you can modify this and um, you know you can present it, you can use it, you can, so long as you leave the um, non-commercial share alike license. Um, if you would like to have a copy of our whole ASTIC course, what we did for you today was module four, lesson four. Um, there are five modules. If you would like to have a copy of the course, shoot us an email. We will be more than happy to send you uh, a link to the computer or to the Canvas Commons where it is located. If you know how to use the Canvas Commons and you don't want to bother us, and, and it's never a bother, trust me, you can reach out and uh, just search for the ASTIC course on Canvas Commons. But we're also more than happy to send it to you. Um, the five lessons that we cover are Canvas Studio, how to create a uh, welcome video with closed captioning and correct your closed captioning. Um, 
The second lesson is presented by the PIO and the Access Department and covers their services. The third um, tutorial that we cover is the content editor. The what? Rich content. Editor. Oh, the rich content editor. I always forget that one. The rich content editor done by, you know, Annika also does that one because she's so wonderful. Um, the fourth one is the latch system. And the fifth one covers using Microsoft Word and PDF and how to create accessible documentation using those tools. Um, if you would like the course, just let us know. That's the end of our presentation today. If there's any other questions, we'd be glad to answer them. This has been absolutely fabulous. Um, and I really, it's really wonderful that you have made the resource you've created available through um, Creative Commons licensure and are willing to share it because um, that's a lot of work you've done and it's really fabulous. Other districts could benefit. Do any of the other participants have questions or comments um, for Nancy or Aniko? Quiet crowd today. I, I am sorry. Just a quick question. I know I am still in awe about the wealth of resources and what you created, all the work. So thank you, thank you so much. I just don't know how to access that through Creative Commons. How do you get that list of the do's and don'ts? And um, um, our email address is. I will put our email address in the chat. If you um, would like to just shoot us an email and say that you would like to have that, that's wonderful and no problem at all. Um, we will be offering this course again in the summer. Anybody who is in who would like to go through the whole course with us to see how we do it, shoot us an email, we'll add you to our list. Um, our email is cg underscore online, no, let's see, can't type, online office at barstow.edu. So just shoot us an email, we'll get you the resources. Sophia, thank you for asking that question because that was in my head as well. And there may be other people who want to. Um, all right, I think what I'm going to do is thank you one more time, Aniko and Nancy. Seriously, you guys whipped through this so fast and I'm so pleased that we have recorded it because I know people are gonna watch this recording I'm going to come back and watch it again and hit pause and do what you did and hit play again and pause and go through and practice with my own courses. So thank you again so much. Thank you.